Comic books in the 1970s saw a big jump in black superheroes, and one of those characters, Blade the Vampire Hunter, left an indelible mark, and while he all but disappeared from comic books in the 1980s, he returned in the 90s and ended up becoming Marvel Comics' first Hollywood hit on the silver screens. Yes, we're talking about the creation of Blade the Vampire Hunter, and you'll hear from Blade's co-creator and artist, the late Gene Colan. That's coming up next on Hero Journalism. Hello heroes, it's Black History Month and we're looking back into history at the creation of comics' most iconic killer of vampires, Blade the Vampire Hunter. Originally introduced as a supporting character in Tomb of Dracula, Blade was co-created by series writer Marv Wolfman and artist Gene Colan. Colan was actually a bit of an unsung hero for diversity in comics in the 70s, having co-created two of the top three black superheroes of Marvel, having earlier created Sam Wilson the Falcon with writer Stan Lee. He also co-created the lesser Marvel hero Brother Voodoo, a character you may know today by his current alias, Dr. Voodoo. Cohen said his approach to multiculturalism in comic books was simply that of an artist reflecting the world that he saw, and he said it went beyond just the few times that new characters could be introduced or new superheroes. Colin strove to bring diversity even to background and incidental characters. He said artists often got in a rut and drew people the same way over and over again. So Colin strove to not only bring different ethnicities into the background characters and world of the superheroes, but also even different body types. No, well, we did Brother Voodoo once. Uh, that was another black character, but... Uh and then the Falcon. The Falcon was another one. And then Blade, of course, came along. And so I've been at that. When I, when I finally did Blade, I was already used to drawing several. I like to introduce black people into the storyline, if at all possible, because, I mean, they blend in very well. I mean, like anyone else, Chinese, black, or otherwise, I mean, those are people out there in the crowd. And so I love to draw them. I, it, it would give... Uh, a little difference to the story, a more uh, reality-based plot. Uh, if you can look at something that you don't expect to see but does exist, uh, then you take more notice. Even uh, all the young people, like myself at the time, I was in the uh, very early 30s or so, have a tendency to draw everyone thin if they happen to be thin, young and thin. But there are heavy people out there, there are old people out there, there are women out there, uh, there are dogs out there. I mean, that makes up our culture. Everyone in life isn't thin. So to, to give it a, 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 a feeling of reality, I would uh, come up with different types of characters. Heavy, thin, old young, I would try to mix it up. I thought that was an interesting point about trying to vary body types. Comics are an idealized art form, often showing just idealized physicalities. But I also asked Gene what he thought about Blade as a character, and whenever he talked about Blade, it was always in terms of a character in the classic heroic mold, the heroic Blade that he often compared to Daredevil as he saw that they both had a very similar moral code. High morals, uh, strong, very similar to uh, perhaps uh, Daredevil with his ethics. Uh, a, a person that wants to get rid of, rid of the world of evil. You can't, you, you can't uh, bring into play some to, to do a role like that or to play a role like that someone that isn't sympathetic to doing the right thing as as often as possible and to be as honest as he can possibly be even when i asked colin about blade's character design for him it went back to blade's heroic character and how each little element was supposed to emphasize his heroic stature. Of course, Blade wasn't a traditional superhero, and he wasn't in a traditional superhero comic book, so some of those traditional superhero trappings were cut off to Gene. He had to use elements that felt a little more real-world and functional, and yet still, he tried to add some little touches that gave it the heroic feel that he felt that character needed to represent. That was Marv Wolfman's suggestion as 
just a new character to bring into the Dracula series. And so I worked it out with him uh, on by the phone. And uh, we, we came up with uh, the appearance of Blade, just a good-looking uh, fellow, a black guy that uh, could uh, be strong enough and handsome enough to uh, be a, a vampire slayer. He certainly wasn't going to be a, an ugly character, but a, but a heroic figure. So I came up with, with Blade as, as, as he appeared in the books. After talking with Gene Colan, I could tell that Blade was a character he truly loved, a creation he was immensely proud of. So what did Gene think about Blade making the leap from comic books to the silver screens of Hollywood? Well, that's a little bit of a stickier subject, so we'll be talking about that in a future video. Please subscribe so you can check it out. And if you like the video, give it a like and share it with your friends so they can learn this little bit of comic book history. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time on Hero Journalism. Uh -huh.